accessible linguistically. He uses simple words. You know, vocabulary is not an issue. But when it comes to meaning, you know, he's very uh, versatile. I have chosen to work with a poem called Nothing Gold Can Stay. And in that little uh, statement that Robert Frost uh, made when he was interviewed, you know, he became a big uh, figure in, in American culture. Um, you know, it's a, like a pre-reading uh, um, activity, you know, or a pre-reading um, for uh, anticipation of what he will be doing with this poem. You know, when uh, Robert Frost was asked, what do you think about life? He said, well, in three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. It goes on. That means life is always changing. There's nothing permanent. And that is what he does in this poem. I will show you now, you know, my um, objectives in this lesson when um, working with uh, Nothing Gold Can Stay by Frost. You know, I will, uh, you see them there on the board. Uh, but the idea is, you know, to use the poem uh, to develop language, to develop, uh, to explore feelings, and also to teach students to appreciate literary texts. And, you know, indirectly, if you want, you know, if, if a student is interested in, in poetry or in a short story, he may be later interested in other arts. You know, our world is surrounded by visual arts, uh, video clips, films, etc. So, you know, this may be the first step, you know, to encourage students to explore the arts. Uh, before we begin, there's a biography of uh, Robert Frost, you know, and as I said, you know, he uh, worked in Britain, in the United States, published uh, widely, and significantly, he was also a teacher. He taught English in a high school for quite a long time. So, you know, that's why I also chose him. You know, he was a poet, but he was also a teacher, not a university teacher, a high school teacher. Uh, nothing gold can stay, as the title suggests, nothing gold, you know, nothing precious. You know, gold is a symbol of uh, something valuable, precious, that shines, that stands out, but it can't last. And uh, uh, Frost is trying to tell us that nothing is permanent that change, mutability, transformation are the essence of life. And in this poem, he addresses the theme that is the central idea of change, mutability, you know, with great nostalgia, uh, through the observation of the seasons. Uh, Frost, as I said, lived for most of his part in northern climates. He lived in Britain for a while, and then he lived in the northeastern part of the United States where they have dreadful, cold, white, snowy winters. So, you know, the coming of spring is a tremendous event. I will read to you the poem before, you know, I analyze it, uh, you know, line by line, and then we will do some other activities. Nothing gold can stay. 
Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaves a flower, but only so an hour, then leaf subsides to leaf. So Eden sank to grief, so dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. Uh, this poem, you know, before, you know, diving into the poem, as I tell my students, you know, one should dive into a literary text or do as miners do. You, you should pan for gold, you know, looking for things, you know, how words are arranged, what they mean, you know, how sounds contribute to the meaning. Uh, before that, we will look at uh, some words that may pose difficult to the students. For example, the word hue. Hue is related to color. It's like a shade of color, matiz in Spanish. The other word, you know, that may pose a problem is subsides. There, the verb is used in the present tense, and subsides mean means to give way, to be transformed. The other word, and I think two more, because the poem, as I said, seems uh, lexically quite simple. Uh, sank. Sank is the past tense of the verb to sink, you know, which is like to drop below the surface. And dawn is the beginning of a day, you know, when the sun comes up every morning. Uh, let's, uh, you know, having done the vocabulary, uh, let's uh, look at, um, at this poem. Nothing gold can stay. I think we should always, when we analyze a poem or we work with a poem, I prefer the word work, uh, always begin with the title. The title is very significant. And in this poem, as, as you've noticed, you know, the title opens the poem and it ends the poem. It frames the poem. And the title, Nothing Gold Can Stay, is sort of epigrammatic. You know, it's sort of like a wisdom statement, you know, like a philosophical statement, very simple. Nothing gold can stay. You know, you could say it in your own words. Nothing precious lasts. And, you know, the poem begins with that and closes with that. Now let's go to um, the poem, the first line. Nature's first green is gold. Uh, you know, this poem, the first line, is a paradox. You know, a paradox is a contradictory statement, you know, and it recurs in literature. It recurs also in our current, in our daily language. You know, the paradox is nature's first green, that is the first little leaves that appear when spring comes on, are supposedly green, but the speaker here tells us, look, it's not green, it's gold. Well, you can take it literally and say it's gold because in the northern United States, you know, the first leaves are yellowish rather than green when spring begins, but it's also gold because it's very precious. You know, it's the first sign that the earth is coming back to life after a long freezing winter. Then the second line, her hardest hue to hold. Here, you know, in the first line, we saw one literary uh, device. Gold is a symbol. You know, gold, a symbol is a word that has many meanings. It's a metal, it's precious, it's a color, it's valuable, etc. 
And here in the second line, we have an 